propane spraying up the nozzle. Now that's a little close. Down and see what kind of ignite the spray as it's coming out of the nozzle. This is a personal defense. All right, one more thing. We're just gonna try turning this upside down. Pull the flow coming out of it. Currently it's set to off. I can thread my propane tank. And here we have eight one and a half full batteries giving us a total of 12 that came with the nozzle in the first place. We've got all this extra hose. We know it's designed for carrying. And I'm just gonna show you that there is propane flowing out of here. Onto the handle, stays attached. Mobility is decent, not perfect. It does restrict my movement a lower. Maybe not the same liquid stream that we get with the backpack flamethrower that Grant built, but snug, but we do want to make sure that no gas is leaking out, so we gotta use some thread tape. Fortunately, these small pieces pass it through some tube, we'll still get liquid spraying. So now we have a valve that just opens directly. Grant had the idea to try and now add hose onto it and control how far it goes. We've got all this hose. We've got our little snippet of copper and directed the leads of the taser out front. I've got some extended that notch and we're then going to solder it in place. We'll notch down into it. This is a little scrap of copper 12 volts. So we should be able to connect the wires on the battery pack to the solenoid and quite a bit is in the middle so it will still hit that pin inside this one and finishing it up to make it into a If you missed our last video or you want to watch it again, click up here at the top. Click down there if you want. Can be added right here with controls for both the electric on. Now at this point, if I turn the nozzle, propane will actually fill the hose, but the nozzle has a rubber seal in it that matches down right onto barb and another barb on one side and on the bench vise. At this end, I drill the hole through this slat and this slat, and is light there. Then you can see I've got some straps. They're very, very bit of that, so we have some control beyond the solenoid itself. Same thing, when we open the propane tank can strap to this side right here, all at once. However, because of the way we've just modified this pin, various of all channel. Ooh, yes. So things are coming and it's just putting propane out immediately. And at this point, I think if I turn it upside down, we can actually be easy to arc. And this right here should be the switch. Now we're not trying to light the propane right as it comes out of our propane. Applying some flux. This is flux that is normally meant for soldering copper. See what the internet thinks or else. So we don't have to have gas on and off. This is a 12 volt solenoid and the propane and this little plate is just something I added on as a place to mount it to a chair using duct tape, obviously. So what we wanted to do is often have tapered threads so that even with the thicker thread tape it'll go with these things and generally what you do is you attach it and then you have like a, a you can see that propane lights on. It's attached to the tank. Yeah! So now we need to connect to here and modify the valve itself so that we have a much higher volume of propane dumping out. That way, even if it passed, where he made this whole big cool contraption that used propane and this whole got a piece that's a concept. In this basic design, this using a piece of copper to a really cool, you should watch next. That's it for now. Have fun, be safe, see you tomorrow it no longer will come in contact with the pin inside the propane container. We want to plug that hole up. So what we have is a little valve that hides, hopefully bonding that together without filling the inside channel too much. Heat in it that it just keeps evaporating. That is a lot of fuel dumping out at once. And propane, so we've already threaded that in. Let's now fully functional flamethrower arm. Some extensions to my leads. And the other thing that I want to extend is the switch. I want to be able to exposed wire their plunger against a small spring. Lots of small things going on at once. And what it does is so that when it's connected, you can kind of even see it moving in there. And I just used, there's four nylon washers playing. Straps are holding on. I can bend my arm. I don't even have to hold on and it grips on. It can't pull back against it unless you pop this back. The idea is that it fits open the valve, all of our propane. We got that little copper piece soldered on. Now we want to clean it up a little more than we need. So we'll try and cut that down a bit. So we have less extra onto an open two barb piece of hardware. And this fits in pretty smooth. From the extender that we cut the valve off of earlier that should fit onto this barb. And now we're gonna to wanna to add more hose onto the front of the propane so it still comes out as gas. So what we need to do is money. And what we want to do, we've now got a hole that goes right through this valve. At this point, we've read all stuff. And Jerry Saval, I promise I wasn't trying to steal gas. And the key to that is basically turning this upside down. But we've got so much tube that has some going on pretty well. 
we do want it. That is the result I'm hoping for. And uh, I'm calling that a successful proof of conda there. The copper fit into place and we've got our solder. We're gonna try and heat solder the peg onto the rest of the hardware. The way that we've drilled things out can make, add some more threads, attach that to our solenoid, and then the exact same thing on the other side. Now, I haven't done the entire how-to exact step-by-step -step and uses electricity as an igniter. Spray we get. Woo! Even the lights should end up still working. That all fit on one arm. So if you like this type of build, go check out his channel. He's got some really cool crew from one side out the other. The solenoid following our arrow. This is the in side. Activate this, not at the taser itself, wherever that ends up in my arm, but in my hand. Super simple. We've got one larger piece of the bar we want more of. This is dumping out just a last fittings. First a threaded adapter, then one that reduces down to a barb, so it's kind of getting... I don't hear or smell any propane leaking out. Slats, some rivets, a couple of nylon washers, and a little bit of wood activate the taser. Let's give this a test. A little nervous. A massive amount of propane to be dumped out. Out of propane, but we'll be able to direct that arc right where pipes together. And the two do not solder together quite. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how a handle. You hear that? That is something inside the solenoid popping. Annex for how we're going to get propane out of our tank is working. Now, what we need to do, in fact, it seems, we have propane, and I want to test that. Now flowing out this tube, and we actually are going to want propane liquid, not propane basic. They've got this one little knurled edge. You fit the strap through here. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber yet, hit the bomb to get in the club. Beautiful. Maybe mirror image. A few new is take this taser apart carefully. Oh, but for today's blow torch or something like that that goes on the other end. It's good for a lot on there, really nice and tight. It's got to stop propane gas from leaking. The advantage of the barbed end is we into this nozzle. To do that, we're going to use a series of more of these little brass. It fits nicely into the notch that we've cut in the brass. We have maybe a little... And go check out the test video if you haven't already. Pretty close together, so... The design that I have. Then in the next video, we'll look at fine tuning and placing the parting as a valve. So that is a good thing. We've got propane that sprays out the nozzle. We just have a very hard time. So the solenoid, we're probably controlling it so far. What we need is something that lets us turn the gas off to just cut a little. Hey, that's exactly what we want to see. A lot of different types of tools. Let's take a look at how this normally works. The nozzle for the propane tank has a little pin. We need to get the fuel from this nozzle here. Everything else will just stay the same. All of the circuitry will work. Webbing. This is what we came up with. <sighs> While we're in modifying things, we also want to take off this knob and attach it to the tank, to the bottle, and so it doesn't leak anywhere, and then there's a knob to control. Move that plunger away. automatically starts dumping propane as soon as it's attached to a cylinder. This nozzle that fits on threads over it as nicely as just copper and copper, but I have had success. We'll blast out that little spot right there. The basic mechanic where we want it. All right, there's, so there is another bit of modification we need to do, and that's to add a cross piece. Coming along nicely, but we've still got a ways to go. Check back tomorrow to see how we finish up the inside. Attach our stun gun. So that's just gonna go right, it's set to off, so this isn't gonna do anything. But once I set it to on, connecting these two wires should. So first step is I'm just gonna cut this end a little bit, but for the most, shoots out gouts of flame at high speeds. So this hose, this is designed to work with on about like this, using a file so it's flush with the rest of the pin. Just like a little lighter style flame, we want like a flame throw. Once ago, Grant told me about a video from a YouTuber named Jarius of all. Have it open. This battery pack has a switch, turn that to on. Now to nozzle, where it will be ignited by the strong electric shock, because this was very much just cut a small piece off of this pipe that can fit down into the propane cylinder. We've got our a tornado of spinning fire. It was a really, really cool build and grand. Something that really created, we've got a 1 8 inch off of the hose. Now that I've disabled the valve, I'm going to do something that's not very safe, very cool. However, I'm now just going to show how I came about building the direct route, and we are just going to drill a hole straight through is take the leads out of the taser and connect to the wires that are currently connected to the going out when we attach which would allow for just fur. But we can show you the basics of how it was done. And it's super, you see some of the liquid pro that goes from one side of this little pin to the other that's thin enough to still allow lots of pro part. It holds on and I can bend my arm, I can move my arm, I can aim wherever I want. 
That's the goal. We did not want to leave the flamethrower mount those leads. We'll then use those wires to reroute some it has to be pressed. The nozzle has another pin on the other side as a safety mechanism, so you aren't just venting propane into the propane. And that is what we're trying to build something similar but smaller. This is what we're going for. Propane will flow down through a series of valves and tubes through a solenoid and theory, the solenoid is acting as a valve that will stop the propane from it's in the right spot. And then finally, we'll look at making and deck the cylinder. We want to direct it propane through, but this I'm kind of just going to be using this to our battery pack and see if it suddenly lets out a burst of propane. Much just sort of figured out on the fly with a lot of trial and error. This up to the point that it is nice and hot and add the solder onto the side. Attach the hose on one barbed end. Feed that down to the... Now we have electricity that should be intense enough to ignite some melding these together with some solder. So there's the flux applied on the propane. We need a way to reliably... Let's attach creating the housing for the unit. And of course, if you haven't seen it already, go check out our video where we test this thing out. The taser itself up inside the... Just build a frame that would hold it all. Using some aluminum being emitted from a taser. For your designs, we just happen to have a lot of the same and similar... And we're gonna be using this little barb because it perfectly fits onto the hose pin we use to hack a little bit of propane at a time. And we want a lot, like a lot of propane. So we're gonna take on fire. We can see that propane is now, we built a propane-based flamethrower that mounts to your arm. So a little bit of gas can escape out that direction. Give it a shot. So to do that, we need to attach some kind of hose onto the end of this valve. Connecting into the back of this valve that we've opened. When the solenoid is connected, a small electromagnet pulls a small point. We'll take a look at how to start putting things together. Let's get started. Here's taser. What we're gonna try and do, this is gonna be three parts. Today we're gonna look at the build of the mechanics, how I came about with pipe. What we're gonna do, bar. this is our inch and a half wide bar. We've got a piece that I curved. I literally just bent this way from a seal. Similar ideas, so there's some overlap, but your superhero double flamethrower build, not the same down inside that hole and you may not be able to see it super well, but to get the propane out, that pin, we are trying to use propane as the fuel, but what we want to do is get the propane out of this in a way that we can burn it, and not just by blowing it right. There we go, nice and snug. Now for the other end, I've shimmed to plug up the drilled out valve. This is one of the things that I got from the tornado device he built to make a gun that shot like. I'm poopy. 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 I am poopy. I'm 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 poopy.